What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna be taking a look at side loading the AMD driver 25.3.1, which has support for Monster Hunter Wilds and other games, brings us more up to date over the official driver and also brings the new AMD Fluid Motion Frames 2.1. I've done guides on this for Legion Go in the past. You guys have asked for me to do the Ally, so we're gonna check it out here. Now, I've done this to the Ally X and the original Ally. We are gonna use the original Ally in this video. Both of these guys running the official driver right now. I did have this, have this side loaded on my X, but I had uh, restored this factory and doing some other videos, so I can't sideload again on there because I need the factory driver. So we're gonna use the OG Ally, but it's the identical process and it definitely fixes all of my Monster Hunter Wild issues on both devices, which we'll talk about more. We're gonna need, of course, the new 25.3.1 driver from AMD. I'll put a link in the description for you there. And you're also gonna need the display driver uninstaller DDU that we'll download here shortly as well. I'll put links for all that in the description as I usually do. Now, the other thing is I would change a couple of settings if you're gonna be using safe mode to do this, which I typically do for myself. And that's gonna be going into privacy and security and device encryption. And if you're using device encryption, you're gonna need your BitLocker recovery key, which you're gonna to have to follow the instructions here in Windows to get. I don't use the encryption, so it's not really a problem for me. I usually turn it off. For sign in options in your accounts, you're going to want to come in where it says for improved security, the Windows hello and turn that off. Otherwise, you won't be able to use a password to log in on save mode. Now, if you want to pause Windows updates, you can go into your Windows updates and settings. I do like a pause for five weeks. I'm always tinkering and changing stuff. So that usually works for me um, to pause the updates. But sometimes for some people, it will still revert the GPU driver update. You can search and go into services.msd here. You'll see services tab. You could click that and it's going to take you into the services. This is a little bit more of a way to disable this long term and you can undo this at any time, but you're going to scroll down until you get to windows update, double click that. And then you're going to see some options in here. All you got to do is go to the middle where it has the startup type. Mine's on manual right now. You can click disable right there and then you'll click apply and okay. And that'll keep that supposedly from uh, rolling back your GPU driver. And you can always go in here and change it back to the previous setting that it was before so that Windows updates will work again. All right, so with all of that done, let's go ahead and download the driver and DDU so that we're ready to go here. Windows 11, 25.3.1 right here. I'm gonna download that, get it ready to go. We're gonna go over to the DDU site and we're gonna download that as well. Again, I'll put this the uh, websites in the description for you if you wanna grab them from there. So we'll get these downloaded. And once both of these are done, we'll take a look and get the DTU extracted. So once those are finished up, we can close this out, go to our file explorer here, go to downloads, and you're gonna see both of our downloads there for our driver and DDU. Now, what I wanna do actually is extract DDU. So we're gonna highlight this, I'm gonna hold on there. We're gonna to go to extract all, extract, and then we're gonna get another folder that's gonna have a DDU application. We're gonna run that application and it's gonna extract again and create a DDU folder, which is where the actual display driver uninstaller application will be that we're gonna run in safe mode. So now we're ready to be able to do that. Now, typically I would use this method of restart options and going into troubleshoot and advanced options to get into safe mode through this way. And this typically works on most devices, but I've had trouble getting any kind of keyboard to come up or work with this if I don't Bluetooth or physically plug one into the device. So I don't know, I've had all kinds of trouble. I've tried all kinds of shortcuts, hotkeys, everything, and nothing will really work for me on that. So rather than getting my keyboard out, I'm gonna use another method here that you can use as well if you want to. So you're gonna search and you're gonna look for MS config or your system configuration. And it's just gonna bring up a simple menu for you. So we're gonna go here and there's a boot tab right here that we wanna to, want to click on. And then the first option here, safe boot. You just highlight that and the minimal is fine. The top option or network if you're gonna need any kind of access to the internet. And that's all you have to do. And that'll boot you into safe mode right away on a restart. You are gonna to have to uncheck this though to turn it off once we get done the uninstall. We'll click restart and this is gonna bring us around to log into safe mode. I'm gonna skip my login, but brought me right in here and we're gonna go in system configuration again and we're gonna to go to that boot tab again and uncheck safe mode, apply but don't restart yet, just have that applied. Now we can go do our DDU. That way when DDU restarts, we'll go back to normal mode. So we'll go to our downloads folder and we're gonna open up that folder that we extracted all the way into the DDU folder and then we're gonna run that display driver uninstaller application. 
Now we've already paused our Windows updates, but I usually go ahead and check off this bottom option of preventing Windows updates anyway, just kind of a habit. We'll close that. Now over here in the drop down menu, we're going to click GPU. It's going to default to AMD. If it doesn't, you can select that. And then the top option to clean and restart. It'll do the whole process by itself, uninstall the driver and restart you where you can log back into Windows. Now that that's done, we're ready to actually install the driver. You can see we don't have the AMD folder anymore or anything here. So we'll go into our file folder again. We'll go to our downloads folder. And we are going to now run that driver software that we downloaded. Pretty simple. It's going to fail as always on any of these devices for Z1 Extremes, just like the Legion Go. This process is the same on every device with the Z1 Extreme pretty much. And it'll go through this process and since it's not directly supported by AMD, it will fail out. But it puts all the files on here that we need to manually install it. So we'll close this out and we'll go ahead and get this installed. We're going to go and you can search for device manager. We'll go there and we're going to want to go to where our display adapters are. It'll be a Microsoft basic display adapter now that we've done the uninstall. We're going to go to the driver tab and then update driver. So we'll click that right here. Now from here, we're going to do browse my computer for drivers, then let me pick from a list, then have disk and browse. Now we're going to be able to go into where we got those files. So go to our C drive. Now we have that AMD folder, AMD software, packages, drivers, display, WT6A underscore INF, and this bottom folder or file right here that has all the drivers in it. I'll highlight it right there for you in that file you click that to open it click ok and you're going to get a list of drivers now in this list of drivers different people might use different ones um if it's not broke i don't worry about fixing it so i've always had the best luck with the tm 780m graphics driver for the z1 extremes if you want to do something different you can go for it i'll click next click yes and i've never had any problems with this one on any of the devices. So once that successfully installs, we can close and you'll see now it does say 780M Radeon instead of the basic driver. So we can close out of all of this here. And now we need to install AMD Adrenaline because that won't be automatically installed on here since it's not an official OEM driver. So back to C drive and that AMD folder, software installer, packages again, drivers again, display, that WT6A underscore INF folder again, and this B4 or whatever letter to number folder you have right here towards the bottom. You go in there and you're gonna find a CCC2 install. When you find that in that folder, you're gonna run that and it's gonna install the Radeon software on the computer for you and you'll be good to go. So this might take a couple minutes, just be patient. Once it's done, we can click close here and it'll be finished up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and restart the device. Once it's restarted, I am gonna go ahead and open up the AMD software, make sure it's running properly here. Skip this and we're in, and now we have the 25.3.1 newest update with AMD Fluid Motion Frames 2.1 and better support for games like Monster Hunter Wilds, which was constantly a crashing problem for me on this Ally and my Ally X. But this driver fixed that up. I haven't had any crashing problems now in Wilds on either of my Ally or my Ally X. And of course, Fluid Motion Frames is working too. Now, as far as hotkeys, you can set up all kinds of hotkeys using Armory Crate and all the different hotkey options in Radeon software. So something simple like bringing up the AMD overlay to see if Fluid Motion Frames is working and also toggling those on and off, you could set those up. So you can see what they all are in the AMD software. You can go into your armory crate, your configure, gamepad mode for me typically as I'm in a game. And then you can see I have macro one and macro two on my left and right bumpers. These are hotkeys set up so that I can turn the, just the overlay off for AMD and so that I can turn fluid motion frames on and off. And you can set up those macros by going into those edits and your combined keys and adding them in here. Now, if you don't already have any set up in here, you can hit X to add. You can rename these if you want. And click edit and you're going to pick the combination of keys that you want that macro to be and then you're going to be able to set that macro to whatever shortcut button you want from there it's pretty easy to do an armory crate and it just makes it easy if you want to be able to toggle features on and off so set those up how you want in there 
All right, so with all that done and set up, we're now on the new driver. I have my, my shortcut key set up, and we're in Monster Hunter Wilds first, just to see how that would do. And I put some good time into this to make sure it wasn't crashing on me, just as I did the Legion Go and other devices. And with this dr driver, fortunately, even though we can talk about performance in Monster Hunter Wilds forever, but even though the game is still rough, with uh, frame gen on low and uh, medium textures and everything that I was crashing on before, I'm not crashing at all, at least for me here now on the RG Ally or the Ally X, which is nice to see. And I figured that would probably be the case because this driver did fix the issues on my Legion Go as well when it came to Monster Hunter Wild. So again, while the game still has its performance issues and they definitely didn't optimize this thing very much and we all kind of know the story with Wilds, it's definitely much more playable now on the RG Ally and Ally X with this driver and working well. You do still need in-game frame gen and all that. But I was happy to see that as I moved around to different areas and got into some different fights and things like that and social areas where I might um, crash out, I didn't have any of that. No real performance issues, no real stutter problems except for certain areas and uh, no crashing. Now Fluid Motion Frames 2.1 I did test in just a couple of games and playing the new Two Point Museum, uh, or which is a lot of fun and I can turn that on and off here. The overlays get a little janky trying to show it here and turn it on and off but I am able to use my shortcut, double the frames here and turn Fluid Motion Frames 2.1 on and off while in the game here. It's not a perfect experience in this game. It was a little janky trying to show on the banner whether it was actually on or off, which is why I was using the overlays. But having the AMD overlay on always does kind of cause a little bit of issue with fluid motion frames on these devices. But it was working properly and it felt a lot better than 2.0 or the last version that we had. I didn't have quite as much trouble clicking it on and off and using the overlays in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is why I kind of like to test this one with fluid motion frames sometimes. Um, but yeah, I was able to tick that on and off here just fine. And we're running 45 base frame rate. We turn it on. We go down to about 39 here, but it doubles those frame rates up into the 70s. So working properly there as well. And it definitely feels better, this version of 2.1, as far as input latency. And it looks a lot smoother as well. Recording 60 FPS on a camera while the game's running over 60 could make it look janky on YouTube. But here in person, it definitely looks a lot smoother and feels better than what the previous version of fluid motion frames was. So if you're looking to mess around with fluid motion frames at all, or you're having issues with Monster Hunter Wilds or other games crashing, you might want to try sideloading this driver onto your ally. Otherwise, though, I do personally prefer to run official OEM drivers from the companies that often have time, often less problems um, and bugs and issues. You're always taking some kind of risk when you do this if you're going to have a problem or if it goes smoothly for you or if you're going to have to roll back and do OEM drivers. But if you want to tinker, if you want to mess with 2.1, if you're having issues with other games, it might be worth it to you. Anyways, guys, as always, thanks a lot for coming and check out the video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.